Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, December 14th. Welcome back in the pursuit of wealth. And in today's video, we're going to discuss HexoCorp's report's first quarter fiscal 2021 financial results. So before we jump into today's content, make sure to smash the like, hit the subscribe. I would appreciate it very much if you enjoy this market perspective. So right hot, hot off the press, we have the results in. So without further ado, today reported first quarter fiscal 2021 financial results. And just as a heads up, I haven't gone over this yet either. All amounts are expressed in Canadian dollars unless otherwise noted. I would like to thank the entire Hexo team for remarkable progress made in the first quarter, said Hexo CEO, co-founder Sebastian St. Louis. Today's record revenue from performance, record revenue, reflects our commitment to providing consumers with high quality products at reasonable prices for all occasions. We continue to hold our number one market share position in Quebec while continuing to aggressively expand into other markets. Hexo is now top four in the adult use market share by net sales in dollars in Canada. We also have moved into the top beverage spot through Trust, our joint venture with Molson Coors, and have reached the number one market share position for hash, which we believe will continue to be an important category for the industry. Key financial and operating highlights from, one, from Q1 2021. Gross revenue of 41.3 million, woo! Absolutely crushed. So let's take a look at investing.com. Let's see what they were. So that is going to be in Canadian dollars. So we'll go over here to TSX, see what they were predicting. So they were expecting 28 million. So that is a huge beat. So congrats to the Bulls, record highest in company's history yet again. So we were, like I said, we were expecting 28.68 million, came in at 41.3. So huge revenue beat, the highest in company's history, increased 14% from Q4 20 and 114% from the comparative prior year. Net revenue of 29.5, up 9% from Q4 2020 and 103% from a year ago. Sales momentum increased across Canada with 18% of the period's gross sales coming from Alberta, 15% from Ontario, and 6% from British Columbia. Maintained number one market share in Quebec. Number one in beverages net revenue increased 54% versus Q4 2020. Six straight quarters of adjusted EBITDA loss improvement, 87% reduction from 3.25 million in Q4 20 to 0.42 million. So huge difference there. Adjusted gross margin of 39% on sales, excluding adult use beverages, while beverage related revenue was gross margin positive in its just second full quarter of being in the market. And we know that they took market share from Canopy and Canopy had about a six month head start. At the close of Q1, the company was working capital of 250.3 million, including 149.8 million of cash. So we know that they had about 884 million last quarter. So they are burning through a little bit of cash there, but they should see a little bit more um, you know, ROI and return on investment for a lot of those things like uh, the beverage category, which cost a lot to maintain and operate. So now that they're seeing some fruits of the, that labor, things should start to improve. We have CBD drinks rolling out across the US and Mexico. So very, very bright futures ahead. Operational cash use of 6.1 million for the quarter, not including financing and investing activities. So again, cash burn is going to be one of the main focus for investors. So we made extraordinary gains toward profitability this quarter. And as we continue to optimize production, persist in our war on COGS and focus on reducing our SGNA. This was the sixth sequential quarter of adjusted EBITDA improvement as we marched toward being adjusted EBITDA positive. We believe the strength of our balance sheet along with our low depreciable capital base have put us on a path where we are looking beyond positive adjusted EBITDA and striving towards positive EPS. As discussed, blah, blah, blah. We purposely took the time that are matching. Okay, so let's take a look here. So revenue from sales, 41.3 million. Total revenue net, 29 million. So gross profit slash loss, 18. 214, let's just see, operating expenses, total net loss, so the total net loss of 4.1 million. Total 
Total net revenue in Q1 2021 increased to 2.3 million to 29.4 from 27 in Q4 2020 due to primarily 8% growth in the adult use cannabis sales and 54% growth in adult use beverage sales. Total net revenue increased 103% from the comparative period of fiscal 2020. Operating expenses were 20.8 million in the quarter and improved to 50 as the company continued to streamline costs across the organization. Loss from operations improved to 2.6 million in Q1 2021 from a loss of 60.5 million in Q4 2020, driven by a clean balance sheet and absence of material non-recurring charges. Company's total adjusted EBITDA improved by 87% of more than 2.8 million from 3.3 million in Q4 to 0.4 million in Q1 2021. Net loss improved to 4.2 million from a loss of 66 million in Q4 2020. So huge difference there when the company took significant write downs. So we probably could have expected that since they had the write downs on their, the, such huge write downs on their last quarterly report that they probably wouldn't have any, they were likely getting the, the bad news out of the way, so to speak. So I'm personally very, very pleased with these results. We have the conference call coming up as well for the investor webcast that's going to be at 8.30 Eastern. So that'll be in about 29 minutes. There's the link to click the webcast. If you want that link, just go to hexocorp.com, hit press releases, and it'll have it there in the, in the details. So there is, there you have it. There's the results. The results are in. Let's just see if investing.com has updated their data. No, they have not. Usually takes them a couple hours or so. See if they updated it on the US side. And we'll take a look at some charting here in just a second. No, they haven't on the US side either, but let's just take a look here. So Hexo on the weekly, we were watching a potential weekly EMA bull cross. So I mentioned this in my video last week. So you can see here, if we remove these lines, we have an EMA bull cross that was shaping up. So that was a bullish indicator. We close above the 10 week moving average. We had the stochastic, the MACD trending higher as well. This is an extremely bullish chart. We held a dollar going into the weekend uh, with spy weakness. We had every reason to sell. People could have sold to de-risk going into the weekend with spy a little shaky. They could have de-risked out of Hexo going into earnings, but there wasn't very many people selling right up until the, and there was even a reverse stock split coming. So that everybody knew that was probably going to get approved. So that just goes to show you the confidence that I think people had in these earnings and this stock at the moment. Uh, but very, very bullish chart, still above the 10 week moving average. Taking a look at the weekly moving averages, we closed above the 50 weekly moving average as well last week, which was very bullish, which was sitting down at 85 cents. Again, the MACD is trending higher and we have no resistance on the weekly moving averages up until 279, which is the defined 100 weekly moving average. Nothing defined yet for the 200. And on the weekly, sorry, the daily chart, let's bring that up here. So again, we did have the golden cross. We had also the 50 crossing through the, or the 100 crossing through the 200. Uh, we did have the MACD crossing bearish, but it does look like we're going to set our daily higher low here. And we'll look up to resistance, which is at 133. So let's take a look at a pre-market up to 110, up 10% pre-market. I don't think uh, the real news has hit yet, but we're up 10 cents here after hours. Personally, I think we should be up a lot more than that. 109, 110 after hour, pre-market, sorry. So like I said, we were just looking for a daily higher low. And like I said, they, they crushed their earnings, their revenue. I knew that they were going to crush revenue. So that was my, I said that in the group last week, I said, my thoughts on their earnings is they're going to destroy revenue. They're gonna have record revenue estimates and they're gonna beat estimates, they're gonna have record revenue, but their EPS is going to come in with a slight miss or roughly in line. And so far that looks like it's to be coming true. So we'll, Keep, the, keep a close eye on the hourly chart as well. So we did have to break 102. So let's just take a look here. So we had the low, the high, high or low, and now into pre-market, we would technically be in an hourly uptrend. 
we would now have broken the previous high of the previous daily candle, which hasn't happened since, well, it happened very briefly here after the run up to $1.33, but then we pulled back and essentially just been a lower high every day since. So we have broken that pattern and it looks like we're looking up to $1.33 resistance. So again, we're up about 10% here pre-market. So that's what I'm going to be watching is $1.33 and then after $1.33, we pretty much have nothing until $1.50 and then $2 psychological. So again, we'll see if we can get there today. I personally could see $2 in play today. If we have SPY bounce rebounding today as well, looks like it's getting its daily bounce underway. So I mentioned this again last week. I said if Hexo reports strong numbers and we see SPY's daily consolidation come to an end, which we pulled back for four days, essentially. We're holding EMA 12, and into the end of the week, we were watching for hourly trend changes, but it didn't happen. So here in extended hours, we still haven't changed the hourly trend. We're bouncing here. We're up almost 1% here pre-market, but we still haven't changed the hourly trend. So that's going to be step number one here for SPY. So just know that if Hexo opens up very high today, that if we don't see SPY change the hourly trend, we could see you know, a pullback to start the day uh, once we top out here on the hourly and then set a hourly high or low. And then maybe that's when you want to really enter if you're looking to enter a bullish position in Hexo or in SPY. Maybe you're waiting for hourly consolidation to start the day as we know that the daily high or low is not confirmed and established until we change that hourly trend back to the bulls. So that's where we stand. Once again, congrats to the Bulls. The company continues to impress. I absolutely love the company. I love their products. Um, to be honest, I wasn't, wasn't surprised with their earnings today whatsoever. I knew to be expecting great numbers. And like I said, I'm extremely excited for what the future has in store for Hexo. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on these earnings. We have about 23 minutes until the market open. So best of luck to you today. And thanks again for joining us on the pursuit of wealth. And we'll see you a little bit later on today for another daily market recap.